50 people registered plus we have a lot of MOB employees who are around you who are interested in the meetup. So I think we have a crowd of about 300. Uh, so uh, we, the, I think all of you know the agenda, I'll just run through it once. Uh, but before I do that, let me just introduce uh, myself. My name is Vinayak. Uh, I'm, I, I used to lead the data development team and some of the products that people will talk about now uh, were built by my team. <coughs> and a uh, uh, lit, little bit uh, more about the agenda. Uh, we are going to have four talks today. Uh, we are just skipping the initial part, the introduction, because uh, we are already quite late. So maybe uh, towards the end, we can actually uh, stay back and you know talk a little bit about personal experiences. Um, so going to the talk, the first talk is uh, real-time analytics on HBase. This is something that we have been doing for about uh, um, nine months as of now. And we have a ready solutions which we have deployed. So there are two people from Inmobi who are going to talk about it. Uh, There's Rohan and uh, uh, Kishle. Uh, so you can see the presentation first that is up there. The second talk is on name node availability, uh, which is by uh, Suresh Srinivas uh, from Hortonworks. Um, as you know, Hortonworks was uh, hived out uh, recently from Yahoo and now they are completely uh, um, supporting the Hadoop platform. Um, then the third talk is again from Inmobi. Uh, we have Srikanth, who is a principal architect at Inmobi. And we have developed, uh, so we have, at Inmobi, we have been through about five to six iterations over uh, Hadoop implementation that we have done here. And uh, this is, uh, I think we have grown to such a scale that we now need a complete data management platform and that is when the need for Ivory arose. And Shrikan will talk in detail about that. And finally, we have uh, Arun Singh Murthy who is uh, again <coughs> working with Hortonworks and he's going to talk about uh, Hadoop 2.0 and the future of Hadoop. Uh, so Arun, I think if uh, a lot of you who are there on the Hadoop and uh, users and uh, big mailing list, you would have seen some of his comments. So uh, I think he's pretty well known in the Hadoop community. So over to our first speakers, uh, Rohan and uh, Kishle. So, system we develop on top of HBase. Hence the topic of the presentation is real-time analytics on HBase. So basically over a span of few years Inmobi has grown and so has the volume of events which flows through Inmobi system. So we grew from one machine to n machines, we grew from one data center to multiple data centers but there is one requirement which has remained the same which is like wanting to have real-time, near real-time visibility into our system. And hence, we started to explore various possibilities which are out there. And uh, so this, is, this was a basic problem definition which we had, which is like getting near-time visualization of granular level data. This should work at scale. And we have multiple producers and multiple streams and we should be able to extend it throughout various streams which we have. Since we are across DC, we should, we should also be able to manage it geographically. So, so we started to explore. Uh, we explored various kind of open source technologies which were out there. And finally, after going through a set of iterations, what we found, we found certain sets, certain open source technologies, which we thought we could, we could leverage. And using that, we created this whole uh, pipe, which provides all, which answers to all these problems which we have. <coughs> so, exploring what we found, we use a combination of technologies, which is like, we 
We used scribe for log transfer. We used HPs, but we used it uh, using uh, Open Time Series database. This is by stumble upon, <coughs> and of course HPs on top of Hadoop. And thereafter, we also use a we used to manage a workflow using Ozi. So this this is the combination which help us in creating this uh, this whole pipeline and providing a whole real time view of our systems. So how did we do that? So this is the very simple basic architecture which allowed us and gave us the free hand, allowed us to achieve what we wanted to achieve. So locally we transferred, transported all our events using Scribe, which is by Facebook. Uh, we did local aggregations wherever possible. And then we moved all our aggregated data to a central place so that we have a uni unified view of our uh, network. This is what we did. And in the central place, we had HBase uh, uh, through, and we queried HBase to give real time views and the graphs and everything which we wanted to plot using that HBase. So, this is the central HBase setup which we have. We have a cluster of machines. Uh, OpenTSD, we also have multiple OpenTSD uh, instances running. And there is a data ingestion happening from this side. And thereafter, uh, using this same interface, we are also plotting various events or uh, various aggregated information. So this is the basic address setup in the central group what we have. So after doing all this, after evaluating such kind of technologies, what we managed to achieve. If you look at here, we have almost minute level granularity. And we get a uh, network level information. This is just a snapshot. This does not represent our real systems. Snapshot of what we were able to achieve. So minute level, we were able to plot everything, whatever was available, uh, with a certain latency, of course. The latency varied from one minute to five minutes. But uh, we were able to achieve it and give it. So our scale from a million events to a billion events, we moved on, but still we were able to achieve this using all the combination which I had. Listed out. So this is this is basically a time time sequence. So these are various aggregated metrics which are working. So different kind of metrics. Unit. Uh, this is a segment which I have. Uh, so this is a very small snapshot. The unit. Uh, it's a uh, is what it is. So. Yeah. So, uh, the real uh, learnings from this uh, product was not only what we achieved, the real time visualization of data, but uh, we also had unlock and learn forward from how we can use HPS to solve business problems in general. Like what to do, what not to do, what type of setup we require. What are the best practices that we should do? Uh, how to leverage maximum out of HPs? So uh, the three main uh, learnings were how you design a schema that fits the business problem, uh, how your clients can work efficiently on HPs, and of course, how do you maintain HPs over your production system? So uh, as as you all know, we use OpenTSD for uh, abstracting the schema and the client uh, inherently being used in HPC. So, uh, OpenTSD schema is a real, uh, real gem in its own because it really tells uh, how you should design a schema when you are uh, porting a business solution over HPC. So, there are broad level of things that you should take care of. Like, uh, HBase on its own is very efficient in doing uh, range scans. It's very efficient when you are doing a bulk put. It lags behind to a certain extent when you are doing either random reads or random writes over it. Okay. So, uh, and there are other points as well. For example, if you are, uh, if you are, uh, the keys and the values that you are putting are of various different sizes. Then yes, of course, your space will be suboptimally used. 
So what what the schema in OpenDSD does is it tries to maximize uh, maximize the compression, maximize the encoding that you do when you're putting your data. So that so that there is minimum amount of repetition over your data to waste lesser amount of space and you also try to uh, map a very variable size work set into a fixed size, fixed size work set. Okay. So if you see, I think it is visible to all of us. Uh, this is the generic command that you actually do to put into OpenTSD. You put a matrix okay, with a timestamp, with a value and then you mention various tags that you want to associate or uh, index your record with. Okay. Now these are really useful because when you are querying you can segregate your data and you can tell okay I want data only for certain tags and I want to aggregate over them. So that is the general uh, API that you use. Now when you are uh, when you are looking into the uh, how OpenTSD does it, it does it in two phases. It actually builds two tables. Okay. So this is one table and this is another table. So this is an encoding table where they encode all your tags, all your metrics into uh, into an effort of driving quick size or minimum size uh, uh, tags. So uh, this act this table actually does uh, two side mapping. One mapping is from your encoded key to your uh, verbose key, and the second mapping is the opposite. That is from your verbose key to your encoded key. Now, actually, when they are storing the record into space, other table, they actually only store the encoded UIDs. They don't store the verbose. And hence, what they do is they are able to uh, not only uh, uh, save on wasted space because these encodings are smaller, but also repetitions are avoided. So you really uh, don't waste. Uh, n number of bytes in storing a key that is very uh, very frequent. You actually store it using a uh, smaller encoding. Now this is a UID table that they create and uh, the next table that they create is uh, the actual fact table where they store all the records. <coughs> so the fact table generally contains the encoded row okay, and uh, the encoded row is simply constructed by concatenating all the uh, UID from the previous row. And uh, what they do is they store one row per hour. So for all the combination of your tags, they'll create one row. And for each second in that uh, hour, they'll, con they'll construct as many qualifiers. So if you know a bit about uh, HBase, what it does is it's a uh, sparse sorted map, okay, where there are multi multiple levels of lookup, where each row key maps to a particular column family qualifier and value. And uh, what happens is there are there can be multiple qualifiers within a particular uh, column family. There can be any quali qualifier. You really do not. Uh, declare your qualifier at your creation time of HP. You simply declare your column family. So qualifier is simply what you generate at runtime. So uh, the schema that they have optimizes on the number of rows that you create. They minimize basically, and they leverage the concept of qualifiers. So real learnings from here are like. Uh, a real HBS client or a real HBS schema should really be optimizing on the reputation and wastage of space because it's it's important. And uh, the number of rows that you create and the number of qualifiers that you create should also be well defined. Like you should really should not put a million qualifiers in the same column family uh, because. The qualifiers are not sorted and put into HBase. So the, there is real effort in uh, in doing a scan for the individual qualifiers. Okay. Uh, so for each second, there will be one 
cell stored in HP and uh, associated with each of the rows. Any keys? So the next really uh, important thing is the client design, right? Uh, HPS is a little bit different beast and uh, you must understand uh, what are the strengths of HPS to leverage it really. So open TSD, what it does is the real meat of the thing beside the schema is uh, the HPS async client. Sorry, it is uh, jumbled up here. <coughs> HPS async. So they have written a new client to interact with HBase, and what they do is uh, they have they have uh, taken uh, taken the concept from Python uh, Twisted Library, which is nothing but a method or a, a or an abstraction where you can hide away the synchronous nature of your underlying APIs and yet expose a asynchronous uh, nature of it. So you really don't do not lock on the synchronous uh, calls that are being made to HBase, and hence what you can do is you can uh, multiplex your uh, requests, and hence your uh, client responses become better. Okay, so uh, HBase async client uh, is what they have written. Uh, it's based on again that uh, Python twisted concept, and uh, the clients really interact with an API. So what you do is you start up an IT server, you uh, and you what you do is you uh, you register all the all the callbacks for different commands that uh, that Open TSD supports, and for each of these callbacks, you again hook up into HBase async and then interact with HBase. So the real learning where uh, that there are multiple uh, ways you can interact with HBase. There are really bad ways to do it that are very having very less hurdle. To cross, so a lot of native users try to do that. But to really get power from the platform, you will have to do a bit more of experimentation and figure out what all different clients are there. Uh, and as you grow into that stack, you really start to get uh, great performance out of the solution. So the last last thing and not the least thing that we got from the product was. Uh, learnings of how to maintain a very stable edge base on your production. So if you if you look into the mailing list of edge uh, base uh, user, what you will figure out is a lot of people have uh, difficulty in crossing the first hurdle where they get the edge base stable and up and running in their uh, in their uh, production without uh, significant downtimes or naturally surprises. So what we figured were, uh, yes, there are few things that you will have to know upfront, it's not a black box, but those those things are generic enough so that you can use it across your different products, okay? So the first thing that you do is, uh, HBase is memory hungry, <coughs> memory intensive, okay? Uh, so it caches a lot of information, uses memory extensively, and uh, it is a JVM based process. So the problems of uh, heap, uh, a huge heap, and then corresponding GC collections uh, really, really uh, start nagging after you have run it for a significant amount of time. So, uh, memory uh, overheads and controlling, configuring them is a very important task that you should do. Uh, you should uh, figure out what GC tuning you want to take. It's very trivial once you get it. It is it's up and running without any problem. And the other problem is with, uh, with enabling memslab. So uh, what happens is I'll give you a very brief account of like why memslab is important and what it is. So memslab is simply an effort to uh, to distribute your heap into fixed size chunks. Okay. So that uh, you can reclaim your heap very efficiently. You don't create uh, variable size uh, holes into your heap, which will result into your uh, GC order. So memslab is simply that. It's nothing more than that. So just just plain and simple chunkifying your uh, heap into fixed size chunks and then writing variable size records into those fixed size chunks and then reclaiming them as and when possible. So these two are very important. Then with the uh, auto cleanups. 
So what happens is when you update your records or you uh, you delete your records in HBase, uh, HBase leaves holes. It, it is not an active cleanup. So you can enable auto uh, auto cleanups like you can uh, enable major compactions. Now major compactions are simply rewriting your store files, the files where you wish you are storing your data over Hadoop. Now they will be having holes. So what it will do is it will rewrite them, compact them merge them together and prepare a very optimal store. But it is having a lot of uh, overhead. So if your cluster is already bogged down by uh, application load, a major compaction at the wrong time can have a wrong result on the cluster. And then uh, is the online merges. So online merges is simply where you have empty regions and you want to now remove them. Okay. So you will run, uh, uh, you will run uh, mergers on it so that those re empty regions are, are cleaned up. So what we learned really is we can disable major compactions, uh, automatic major compactions, and we run them manually on our own end. And uh, we run online merges as well. Okay. So online merge uh, is really a Ruby, uh, J Ruby script. You need to run. Uh, again, again, there is a bit of learning curve there, but once you figure out how to run online merges, it's really a piece of cake there. And then uh, <coughs> there are other other problems with uh, number of connections that you have, number of clients that you have. Okay. Uh, now, uh, because there are, there can be too many connections or too many clients connected to your edge base, uh, you can have significant overheads on number of threads being spawned to serve the request. So things like uh, XC with uh, configuration in data node where you limit really how many thread pool you are maintaining for serving a request is also very important to, uh, to ensure that your cluster itself is not being bogged down by your uh, overhead of serving the request. It's only really busy in serving them rather than overhead. That was the last thing. Yeah. So, any questions? So, I think we have.